2018's Distraint 2 video game review. So before I get into it, I want to start by saying this video will not have any spoilers for either of these games, since, you know, if you haven't gotten either of them, and you happen to notice that, yes, as I record this, and until... Oh, yeah, okay, so for the next 18 hours and 36 minutes, there is a deal, as I record this, there is a deal on both of them on GOG.com. You know, I... Yeah, this can help you maybe decide if you want to get both of them or only the first one. So, yes, I absolutely love this game, as I do, you know, I love both Distraint Games and Heal all by the same guy. And, let's see, the... Yeah, um, anything critical I say is not out of bitterness. I played this via Steam, and, yeah, so, gonna try to keep the plot vague since, yeah, so as to not spoil the first one. After the ending of the first game, you know, yeah, Price finds himself in an, in a state that it's, it's slightly unclear exactly what, you know, yeah, and the, yeah, he encounters a human being who identifies himself as reason as part of him tells him he has to forgive himself for what he has done and yeah soon after he finds himself in these you know there are these areas that seem very similar to to parts of the first game but certain things are very different so in a lot of ways this is like the first game so i'm not just gonna restate a bunch of stuff you know i i already did a video on the first one so, yeah, what I'll talk about is the stuff that's new. I continue to be really impressed by Jesse McConan, henceforth Jesse. Not that I know him. I am just... I'm pretty sure I already butchered his last name once. Yeah, Jesse, the one-man studio, you know, for for these three games, he, he made them by himself. Like, he, he had some help in like, translation kind of stuff, but other than that, this is all his, you know, artwork, music, the the coding, level design, puzzle design, all of this stuff. And, yeah, with this, with this straight two, he managed to fix the very few criticisms I and others had of the, well, I'm sure there were other criticisms. The, the, the very few criticisms I agreed with that I've seen others have and what I thought of myself, as well as recapture the magic of the first one. So, in the first one, you could only walk, not run, which could get annoying when backtracking, since you do spend a bunch of it going through areas that you've already explored, and now, let's see, yeah, once, once you've done a thing or picked up an item or the like, you know, yeah, you can... That, that means you can make progress if you go back. It helps a lot that you do now have a run function. I can imagine some might try to use it when you're initially supposed to explore an area and take your time. Really take it all in. Sometimes it will the, the game will prevent you from running when it's really important that you do take everything in. You know, the, the, yeah, that's not what the, the function is for. Sometimes when encountering one of the non-human terrifying beings, you have to hide from it rather than merely, you know, yeah. I don't want to give away if you're ever, if you ever have to run away from one, but hypothetically the option is there. But yeah, you can actually hide you know, there, there isn't, there, there still is not a combat element, and I 100% respect that. I don't think that it would really work for this. That's not really the, the, yeah. Um, but yeah, hiding is very tense, and it's very easy to use. You just walk to the hiding place and click use, and, you know, yeah, it's, it's usually very easy to tell. And, and certainly, you know, in, in the first one, when you can interact with something, it it's the same icon for interaction each time. Where in this game, when you interact with something, it actually tells you what you would be doing. 
you know, examine, talk, that sort of thing, and when it's for hiding, hide, so that you don't accidentally, you know, hide when, when you're trying to examine, you know, and, and there's also, on more than one occasion, the hiding spot will look the exact same. There's this, like, b b cabinet kind of thing, closet, that, that you can hide in, and, yeah, you know, the uh, yeah when you want to leave you you press left or right to to step back out and the let's see yeah the the graphics get a significant upgrade a higher level of detail uh, you know this great like film grain effect and let's see the it, yeah when there's dialogue there are speech bubbles making it feel more natural and where the first game was about these things that Price was doing, you know, and, and you know, yeah, this gradual realization of the, the, yeah, again, trying to keep it vague so that you don't, yeah, this one is, you know, in, instead of reiterating, which, you know, by this point, I have, I had enough faith in Jesse that I wasn't, myself worried, but I can imagine some might, because there definitely are, there are a lot of video game sequels where it's just, I mean, it worked the first, let's, let's just do the same thing, you know, and, and, like, the, the gameplay loop is very, very similar, but, yeah, the, the, it's, it's now Price's journey to try to forgive himself, something extremely important, once we've done all we can to make amends, which, Certainly, you know, by the start of this game, Price feels that he has done all he can. And, let's see... Yeah, he interacts with other personifications of various traits. And, you know, I've seen some say of the first one, I haven't read that many reviews of this one, but the first one got some criticism for being fairly straightforward, in, like there's not a huge amount of complexity. I am not sure that I would necessarily say that this one does, you know, that much better, but I do think it is... You know, I, I wouldn't recommend you play this one without having played the first, but if you like the first one, I definitely recommend this one also. It is a more... There is more nuance to the... the yeah, for, for sure. I can imagine he maybe, you know, saw some... You know, he, he really appears to be someone who, who you know, actually listens to, to feedback. The, the Distraint 2 features at least one beautiful place that fills you with at least temporary optimism, hope, you might say, which makes the despair hit harder because of the contrast. And let's see. Yeah, and we get some some backstory to, to Price, which I really appreciate. The, the first one, you don't learn that much about him as a, a person beyond what he's like currently doing in this one you actually do yeah there you know it's it's essentially a character study and some of the areas you move through are abstract representing concepts others are much more concrete sometimes literally in various buildings and let's see right i appreciate in in the in the first game often if you've walked as far as you can either to the to the left or the right they'll simply be like a wall, you know, to, yeah, so that you can't go any further. In this one, there's a lot of places, If so, sometimes there is that, but there's, you know, especially in the more abstract areas, you can actually walk past the boundary, and it's like there's this intensifying of this creepy effect that was already there, and, yeah, I, I don't know if, like, if you just keep you know, going if, if something will eventually happen as early, but there is this sense that, you know, how to best describe it, basically as if what prevents you from, from going further is not so much a physical limitation as a wall very much is, 
you know, unless you can break it down, which you can't in these games, the, the, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's more of a, of a, of an abstract thing. Uh, the appearance of the personification of Agony is Nightmare Fuel. There is a brief, at least one brief flashback to a therapy session where the massive grandfather coffin, I mean clock, in the background ticks deafeningly loudly. It doesn't last so long that it gets outright headache inducing, but enough for it to be extremely effective. Uh, some of the way the game suggests that Price could have lived a happier life and not hurt people is by appealing to this very traditional married life vision of being a productive and positive member of society. I usually don't love using that sort of thing because it simply is not satisfying life for many men and women today. However, these two games do communicate their messages with hyperbole. I respect that. And the main reason that it really doesn't bother me here is the fact that this is after we've seen the awful things that he used to do. It's not saying everybody would be happy with married life. It's saying both are options and a happy married life does not ruin the lives of the, the poor people that are otherwise having their property seized. And I really appreciate that it's pointed out that technically what Price did was legal, but that doesn't mean that it's ethical. An extremely important message today. There are entirely too many people who say this and that thing can't be wrong because it is technically legal. The music always fits eternally creepy. There's a lot of variety to it. You can actually buy the the soundtrack separately, and and I did. It's worth listening to. It's it's, it's amazing. I I yeah, just you know, if if it's at all your kind of thing, this the the creepy and and you know sometimes very intense and and overpowering music. The game jumps between different places more than the first, not in an overwhelming way, but clearly following the mind state and personal growth of Price, which I quite appreciate. Again, like, he really, you know, the, the first one was, you know, popular, so Jesse, you know, figured, you know, just make another one, and, yeah, he, he did not just rest on his laurels. Like, honestly... A lot of us would have bought this one just like, I mean, the first one's so good, you know, but no, he actually did put a lot of effort in. This is very much like a thank you for supporting kind of thing and not just this thing of like, well, I mean, if you, okay, if you suckers want to keep giving me money, I guess I can, sure, crap something out. And let's see. Yeah. Uh, I think that might be all that I, let's see, so, right, um, I spent, hold on, I had it right, there we go, yeah, um, yeah, I spent two hours, 26 minutes on this and got most of the, no, hold on, I have it right here, the, the, um, uh, Yes, uh, I got five of the nine achievements, and it's one of those deals where the last four are hidden. It's it's possible that at some point I'll I'll go back and replay it to see if I can get the the remaining ones. And let's see, yeah, and and it is you know fifty three and a half of all players completed the the very first part. And 34.5%, you know, completed the entire thing. So, yeah, that is a pretty decent, that's, they only lost 20, he only lost 20% of, of players over the, the course of it. That is, yeah, pretty good re retention, uh, you know, the, the, Yeah. I don't think there was a single puzzle in this one that was just, you know, completely unbearable. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's any. I'm not offhand seeing. Um. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really seeing anyone who posted with with a simple Google search at least 
something that they they just uh, yeah and and again you know distraint one only had one puzzle that i thought was really obnoxious and the same was true for for heal so that is a very impressive rate and i just realized about the so i mentioned the the stealth element that you sometimes hide from these creatures i never felt like it asked me to stay hidden for a just absurd amount of time which again i'm not sure that's a huge problem with stealth games today it also wasn't a problem with dark with a q but then i haven't played that many like very very recent games it definitely you know if you go some years further back there were definitely some stealth games it's, you know if in the in the mid to late 2000s some of the stealth games it was just like, okay, we get it. We're hiding. Can we move on now? And that never happens in, in this one. And it's also not so frequent it, that, that it just gets annoying. And I think that might... Right, uh, the game makes good use of the, the fact that, you know, given, given the... You know, according to how long to beat, yeah, two and a half hours is what others have also experienced. Yeah, that is enough time to, to you know, plant a seed early on, keep coming back to it over the course of it, and then, you know, really pay off on it. And, yeah, this game did a fantastic job of that. I really, really like the ending. The, let's see, yeah, the game is both challenging and fun now the yeah not a huge amount of replayability I you know I don't think that's a problem but just so you know you know if, if that is the kind of thing that is very important to you let's see it's it's basically like once you've played it you'll maybe want to wait a while until the until you've basically forgotten the the a, a lot of what's in it, so it's it feels like it's a new you know, but it does not have like choices along the way for unlocking other endings. Like you know, the there's a lot of inspiration from Silent Hill in both of these distraint games. You know the the I don't off the top of my head remember if it's true of all of them, but certainly a bunch of those. There's different endings, so, you know, yeah, you can, if, if after playing one, you're like, I, I want to play it at least a little more, yeah, you can go back and you can go for a different ending. Again, I don't think that's a problem for, for this one, just, you know, stating it so you're aware, so you can make an informed decision. You know, again, the Silent Hill games were made by a team. This is one guy. And... I think that is right. the The puzzle design is is slightly improved from from the first one as well. There's slightly more variety, not quite the level of variety in in Heal, which you know he he made that in or yeah he released that in 2020. So and and that one uses the the mouse and not the you know in at the end of the day this one does only use um the 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 a couple of keys on the on the keyboard and considering that limitation it does have a, a good amount of variety and yeah um i rate this a nine out of ten and yeah i'm gonna miss you know jesse's games because so let's see there is technically there is one more of the the let's see he he made this game. I'll find it real quick. If the keyboard will respond, there we go. He made a game called After Dream. In yeah, that was that that game is yeah, it's not even half a year old, which is also why you know it is technically on sale, but only twenty percent off. I it's rare for me to buy something that isn't discounted more than that but yeah it's it's on my wish list i am you know yeah 
I I really really do wanna wanna play it. It just isn't gonna be. Yeah, but I'm I'm really really glad that he is still working and the I'm just gonna make sure it's on. Yeah, it is on both my GOG and Steam wish lists. Just yeah. Um, he makes such interesting games. I, I, yeah, I'm so glad that that games like this can actually make it. You know, and in part because of digital stores, where you know you're not shipping out a bunch of discs that you all then you know you have to take care of shipping. You have to take care of of mass production of these discs. But no, it's it's digital, so it's. And I am starting to veer off topic, so I'm just gonna say, yeah. Really, really love this one. Yeah, so glad that you know, yeah, that this and heal I also got on on sale. I got all three of these on sale, and yeah. Um if at all this sounds appealing to you, I absolutely recommend you do the same.